himself and the same new life with which he quickened him for by grace are ye saved and verse 6 says and he raised us up together he made us sick together now giving us joint seating with him in the heavenly atmosphere by virtue of being in Christ Jesus so in other words we are in Christ Jesus somebody say I'm in Christ I'm in Christ if we are in that means we abide in him he abides in us amen now that means any man be in Christ he's a new creature so that means now because we're in Christ we want to know some benefits what are the benefits for being in Christ I'm gonna know if we in Christ we need we need to get some stuff then amen so what are the benefits well we, we said we said last week that uh, power well, look, look, let me show you this before we go to the other one look at um, look at um, John 14 John 14 27 We have power. The first one is if we're in Christ, we have power not to let our heart be troubled. Amen. Well, look what it says here in, in John 14, 14, 27. It says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So if he said, let not your heart be troubled, that means we have a choice whether or not we're going to let our heart be troubled, no matter what trouble come. Amen. Trouble may come, but you can trouble your trouble because you're not going to let your heart be troubled. You're going to take control over your emotions. Say amen to that. Amen. In other words, as soon as something comes, how are you going to respond to it? You got to take control over your emotions because the emotions want to get you to get hurt, um, bitterness, you know, all these things come because of, you know, your emotions and things like that, doubt, unbelief. So you got to make sure Jesus said, you're going to go through, but I've gave you peace. I gave you some peace, right? And this peace is security in the midst of whatever you're dealing with. And it says here in verse 27, and the Amplified Bible said, peace I leave with you, my own peace I give unto you, not as the world give it. Do not do not let your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Stop allowing yourselves to be agitated, disturbed, and do not permit yourselves to be fearful, intimidated, and cowardly, unsettled. So in other words, when we go through something, I know we all got to go through. Just because you're a Christian don't mean you're going to sit up in here and not go through nothing. But when you go through, he said, don't allow, stop allowing yourself to be agitated. Look at somebody said, no more agitated days, no more agitated <laughs> It says, do not allow yourself to be disturbed. Look at somebody say, I'm not going to be disturbed anymore. It says, do not permit yourself to be fearful, intimidated, cowardly, and unsettled. Don't be unsettled. Don't be a coward. Amen. Don't let the devil punk you. That's what it says. Amen. In other words, look at the devil and say, you know what? No matter what, I'm going to stand on the word. No matter what, I'm going to do what the Lord tells me to do. Amen. He said, we have control over our emotions. So first thing he said, well, benefiting Christ do not allow your heart to be troubled. You have power over your uh, troubled heart. Say amen to that. Amen. Now I'm going to go to the second one here. Pray. Give me one hallelujah right now. Hallelujah. Amen. Look at, look at um, Matthew 10. Praise God. Somebody came for the word. Matthew 10, verse 1, you find that? Say amen. amen. Praise God. Look what it says here in the verse, um, Matthew 10, verse 1. Let's read it out loud. Read it, read. And when he called unto him his 12 disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Say amen to that. Amen. So in other words, we have power to command and speak to things. In Christ, you have power to command and speak to things. Look at somebody say, I can command my destiny. I can command it. Because Jesus said here, first of all, he said, uh, here's what we got to understand. He gave you power. This word power here is Azusia power. In the Amplified Bible, it talks about Azusia power, which is authority, and dunamis power, which is ability. So in other words, the Amplified Bible says he's giving you authority, power, and authority over unclean spirits. In other words, the first thing you have, you have the right 
to command. Authority means the right to command. God has given each one of us in here as a believer the right to command. Look at somebody say, I have the right to command. And that means, look what he said you can speak to. He said, unclean spirits. In other words, you speak to the devil. Amen. It's time to talk to the devil. God told me, he said, people are talking to me about their problem, but they need to be talking to the problem about God. Oh, Y'all ain't got that yet. I said, somebody always talking to God about what the trouble is, but you need to be speaking to your trouble and telling your trouble about God. In other words, if there's a devil loose, talk to the devil and say, in the name of Jesus, let me talk to you a minute, devil. I'm not asking God for nothing right now. There's a time to go pray. There's a time to spend time with God. But right now, I'm talking directly to you. I know you are a devil and you are in here somewhere. You're in my finances, but look, look here. I want, I'm going to speak to you and I command you to come out of my finances in the name of Jesus. I can I command you to take your hands off my God's property in the name of Jesus. I command you to give him my joy back, devil. What are you doing? We need to know in Christ we have the ability to be in him, and if we in him, everything Jesus did, we ought to be able to do. Everything Jesus said, we can say. Anything he accomplished, we ought to be able to accomplish it. Say amen to that. And so he said, first thing, I'm going to give you authority over the devil. So if y'all plan to God about the devil, you wasting your time. God's not going to do anything about the devil because y'all already did something about the devil. He already defeated the devil, and Jesus said he gave you the keys to go and carry out what I did. So stop praying to God about the devil. Then, no, no, no. You need to rise up and say, devil, in the name of Jesus. I know you somewhere up in here. In the name of Jesus, I speak to you. I have authority to command you to stop whatever you're doing. We got to understand that because a lot of times in Christians, why be in Christ if we can't act like Christ? I said, why be in him if you can't act like him? Amen. So you need to, first of all, find a devil and talk to him. Amen. Somebody said, I don't believe in devils. Yes, you need to believe in them because the devil is real. Everybody don't like to talk about the devil, but the devil is behind anything that steals kills and destroy, he's behind it. Amen? So in other words, God said, I need you to know I whooped the devil. I sent Jesus. Now he, he's finished everything. He said, it is finished. And now he's sitting with me. And now you, you have joint seating with him. And I need you to open your mouth and start talking to the, the devil. I need you to start talking to command things. I need you to start talking to some things. Jesus, if you're going to be like him, he, start talk, he talked to things. He saw, he saw a tree and talked to it. He, he, he saw a storm and spoke to it. Say amen to that. Look at somebody say, you need to be like Jesus. Amen. And you know, one time Jesus was gone, and you know, the fig tree talked to him. You remember when he went there? The fig tree said, said something. The fig tree said something, so Jesus said something. The fig tree talked to Jesus. And said, you're not eating anything here today because there ain't no, ain't no figs on the, on the leaf. He talked to him. Somebody said, the fig, is that in the Bible? I'm so glad you asked me. Look at Mark 2, 11, 23. Let me show you this. Mark 11, 23. Give me that one hallelujah up in here. Mark 11 and uh, verse 12. Look at, look at this for a second. Somebody said, I'm going to be like Jesus. Glory be to God. Praise God. Look what it says here in Mark 11. Mark 11, um, 12. And on the marvel, and he's talking about Jesus, and it come from Bethlehem, he was hungry. Talking about Jesus was hungry. How many know Jesus got hungry? Now check this. And then it says, seeing the, the fig tree fall off and having leaves, and, and happened that he may find anything there on to eat there, and he came into it and found nothing. So in other words, but leaves. For the time of figs were not yet. In other words, in that, in that day, those fig trees, when the leaves came, the figs supposed to have been there. Okay. And look what Jesus said. And Jesus answered and said unto it. Answer what? I ain't heard nobody ask them. What do you mean? Because the tree talked to him. The tree said, you're not getting anything from off this tree today. And Jesus answered it. And said unto it, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter uh, forever. 
and the disciples heard it. He cursed the fig tree. And somebody said, well, that's wonderful. But guess what? Jesus taught us. Somebody, how many know your problems can talk to you sometimes? Have, have your wallet ever talked to you? Have your bank account ever talked to you? Have a bad report ever talked to you? In the spirit realm, they're going to talk to you. You ain't got no money. You ain't got no money. The only thing you got is enough for two all beef patties, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions, on a sesame seed bun. You can't pay your tithes. You can't pay your bills. Or on your little light bill, do gas bill, do telephone disconnect. Waiting for your next paycheck. You can't get along. You're not going to come out. That sometimes fiends can talk to you. But guess what? You got to act like Jesus. You got to turn to that thing who's talking to you, and you got to talk to it. Amen. You got to speak to your wallet and say, God supplies all of my needs. Let me say you some bank account. I'm looking at all these zeros, but in the name of Jesus, I call me out of debt. Oh, no man, nothing but to love him. All my bills are paid without struggle. I burn this bad report right now. You got to do that. If Jesus answered it, you need to answer. Look at somebody say, answer your problem. Answer it. Amen. So the first thing we see here, Jesus, he answered and said something to the it. The tree was an it. And he talked to it. He said unto it. My God. So when people start looking at you, screen, why are you talking to it? Why are you saying that? Because we're trying to be like Jesus. Look what it says here. And there came. Now check it out. Now look at that. On, look what happened now. Oh, in verse 20. Lord, and in the morning, my God, and they passed by and saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. In the morning, 24 hours later, they, he spoke something, and 24 hours later, God showed up and showed out. See, it didn't happen instantly. Wait, wait, let me back up. It happened instantly in the spirit, but not in the natural. As soon as he spoke it in the spirit, underneath the ground, the, 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 the tree died. But it didn't come, you didn't know it because it took 24 hours to come. A lot of times when we're speaking to something and we're cursing and we bind it, don't, it don't make that look like nothing happened. But if Jesus spoke to, y'all yo, yo, ain't ready for me today. In other words, when you're speaking to it, it may not look nothing happened, but look, in 24 hours, something turned around because he believed what he said. A lot of us don't believe what we say. That's why it don't happen. But Jesus, in 24 hours, I, I speak 24-hour miracles in here. Huh? I, I speak 24-hour breakthroughs in here. I, I pray the next time you speak to anything, it will take 24 hours. It, 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 will, it will happen immediately, but in 24 hours, something will show up and show out in your life. Look at somebody said 24 hours. Yeah, we're releasing that anointing in here today. Amen. And it said here, in the morning, whew, my God, Peter called into his remembrance, and the Peter noticed, he said, Master, look, the fig tree which you curse it is with it away. And look what Jesus said. He said, he answered and said unto him, have faith in God. He said, have the God kind of faith, Peter. In other words, now he began to tell us that not what I did, I want the body to do. If you in Christ Jesus, this is what I want you to do. For look what he says here. He said, for verily I say unto you, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe those things which he say shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. So Jesus said, this is a principle here. A lot of people are praying about their mountain to God, but they're not speaking to the mountain about God, how awesome God is and what God has promised you. And that's why you're sitting here with all these mountains, because you won't speak to them. Amen. So you need to turn up and say, oh, oh I'm going to act like Jesus. Now, he said, he said, whosoever. What is a who, whosoever? Who is that? Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, in other words, he was pointing to a little bit of a mountain. It was a mountain. It was not like a problem, but he was pointing to a mountain. If you, ha you have so much power and ability, if you speak to this mountain and tell it to move, there's, there's so much power in what you say, it'll move. 
He said, but you got to believe those things which you say shall come to pass. A lot of people don't believe what you say shall come to pass because you'll say it and speak doubt. You'll say it and then you go back and say something else in the next 10 minutes. If you believe what you say shall come to pass, then that's when you have what you say, when you believe what you say. Do you believe what you say? Some of us don't believe what we say because we say so many wrong things to show you don't believe what you say. Like, you know, my feet are killing me. If, your, if everything you say come to pass, you dead. <laughs> Amen. Man, I don't never get no breakthroughs. It always something show up. Are we having what we say? So that's why you need to change that and start acting like Jesus. You know, Christianity is not hard, but a lot of people don't receive it because we're doing it our way. We're not paying attention to what Jesus said. We're in Christ Jesus, so you need to know you have a power to command things and speak to things. Start speaking to things. Start speaking to things. See, you know, I, I know you know this, but everybody ain't doing it. I need you to start looking at what's wrong, what the devil has done, and start speaking to it. Speak to your marriage. Speak to your uh, situations on your job. Go up in there and say, you know what, in the name of Jesus. Y'all about drive me crazy in here last week. But in the name of Jesus, I speak to all y'all in here. In the name of Jesus, all y'all devils, in the name of Jesus. Boss, you gonna act right in the name of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus up in here. And every demon up in here that's causing these people to act all crazy, I rebuke you now. That's what Jesus said, though. He didn't just say go there and complain and pray and worry and take all that. Yeah. See, when you know your authority, you can speak and everybody can get blessed. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I ain't break, hey, amen. That, that right there is what people are not doing. Amen. amen. We're praying. Thank God for prayer. But after prayer, get up, go outside. And speak. You remember, you remember, you remember in the movie um, War Room? Can I say something about War Room today? She was praying about her husband in the prayer room. Amen. Fellowshipping. Fellowshipping. But all of a sudden, none changed until she went outside the prayer room and started walking around the house saying, I don't know you hear me, devil. I don't know where you are, but I know you can't have my husband, you can't have my children, and I'm going to open the door, get out of here, don't come back, and another thing. <laughs> what happened? Well, praying is good in the closet, but when it's time to talk to the devil, you need to go outside and start speaking to that situation because nothing is going to change until you do it. Somebody said, but it don't look like nothing happened. Yeah, it didn't look like nothing happened when Jesus spoke to the tree. It didn't look like nothing happened. She didn't know what was happening. But, but way in California, he was on a dinner date, drinking and everything, getting ready to go get busy, getting ready to middle of dungeon, and all of a sudden, he got sick on the stomach. I can't understand. Excuse me for a minute. What happened? Somebody knew their authority. And they didn't have to be there because God was there through the authority of the believer. When you know how to speak, you can chill and the angels go work out things in your life. If you know how, you know how to speak and do what I'm telling you, you don't have to stay up all night long. If you know what I'm talking about, you don't have to look at the gas hand, see how long they, how far they went. If you know what I'm talking about, you can speak, go to sleep, and don't even say nothing about it when it comes around, because you know, guess what? You don't understand. You don't understand. You are no master God. I got God on you. And I, I ain't got to judge you. I ain't got to say nothing. I have already spoke my authority, and don't let me find it in the Scripture and speak my authority. Then I know something is going to happen, because he told me if I submit myself to God and resist the devil, he got to flee. And so that's what we got to understand what is happening every time we speak to things and speak to the devil. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Because things got to line up because you understand I know how to talk directly to the problem. Wow. Look at here. 
Look at here. Look at, I'm, 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 give you, can I give you two more? Yeah. Look at this right here. Look at Acts 3. Look at Acts 3 for a second. Oh, Lord, eh? The devil don't know, but he's crazy. Oh, Lord. The same thing that I'm telling you to do, I had to do it this morning. Oh, Lord. Can I preach up in here today? See, the devil thought he had me. Oh, Lord. But the devil is a liar. And his grandmama and mother-in-law. Oh, Lord. See, y'all don't understand. All day long, yesterday, I couldn't get out of the bed, you know. Because, see, my back went out on me. Let me tell you one thing. And the devil said, you ain't gonna be able to preach tomorrow. But I said, devil, you a liar. You a liar. I'm telling you, there was so much excruciating pain going through my back. I couldn't get out of the bed all day long in the name of Jesus. But I spoke to the pain. Oh, y'all. <laughs> I said, in the name of Jesus. Let me tell you some pain. Now, I know in the name of Jesus, you can hear me. And I command you to stop. I command you to go, and I command you to get up off me. Yeah. Amen. Didn't look like nothing was working. Uh -huh. <laughs> I said, Lord, if you just get me to the place where I've been called. I know I could have just chilled, but on purpose I came up in here today. Just, just to let the devil know, I know you mad because I'm, I'm, in, I'm just taking the, the covers off you. I know you're mad because people's lives are changed and rearranged for the good. I know you're mad because even on TV, people are getting saved, healed, and delivered. I know you're upset, but guess what? If I submit myself to God and resist the devil, you got to flee from me. Yeah. So, so I know I ain't trying to be deep up in here. Somebody said, oh, pastor trying to be deep today. He coming from the top. You don't know my story. <laughs> I'm coming from the top for a reason. And I ain't know the devil, the devil tried to, you know, the devil tried to make it seem like, well, you, you don't want to let them know. Wait a minute now. I, the devil, sometimes the devil can say stuff. Why well, I don't want to let y'all know? Y'all my family. Why, why, why? Why I try to act like I ain't trying to act like none. Because the more if I tell you, at least you can be praying for the man of God. You know, I, you know, I ain't got to come up in here acting like I told you the same thing you got to go through. I got to go through, and even more. But it don't matter because Jesus already defeated the devil, and this too will pass. Amen. You need to rise up and say, I got the power. Look at somebody say, don't let the devil see you sweating. Trouble is going to come, but don't let your heart be troubled. God is not giving me the spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. See, fear is a spirit. Fear is not your friend. Fear is from the devil. He comes to make you be afraid so your heart can be troubled. But the next time fear show up, speak to fear. I'm going to confuse the devil. He's going to give me his best shot, and I'm going to get rejoicing in my house. He's going to give me his best shot, and I'm going to run around the church and praise him anyhow. He's going to give me his best shot, and I'm going to speak in tongues. I'm not going to let the devil see me sweat. I'm not going to fearful. I'm not going to be agitated. I'm not going to be disturbed. I'm not going to be intimidated. I'm not going to be unsettled. Everybody else it can't understand how you still come to church, how you still raising your hand, how you still on fire for the Lord, even though they know what you're going through. But I don't care what you go through. The devil can't stop you. He can't kill you. And he can't, he can't stop your blessings from coming. A situation show up, jump up and say, I got the power. You sit down there, let Dr. give you a bad report, scare him. Jump up and say, hey, woo, I got the power. I have authority.
this over this. But I'm not moved by what I see. I'm not moved by how I feel. I'm not moved by what the devil talking about. Because I'm in Christ Jesus. And I'm not going to allow my heart to be troubled. Because I understand I don't have to be agitated. I don't have to be intimidated. I don't have to be unsettled. Because of the power of God that rests on the inside of every believer. And if I got power, you got power. I'm in Christ Jesus. I'm not going to let my heart beat. Sometimes God don't want to get you out too early. He wants you to have your back up against the wall. He wants the Red Sea experience so you can't take no credit for yourself. Because sometimes you'll get out and you thought the man's did it. You, you, thought, you thought the vitamins did it. You, you thought your mama gave you the money and brought it out. So sometimes I allow you to get your back up against the wall and Pharaoh and his army is coming to kill you. And he says, stand still and see them. Woo! So I want to encourage some of you. Don't get frustrated if you ain't came out yet. You're just gathering up a little more testimony. Don't get frustrated if you pray and it ain't showed up yet. When it's time to show up, it's going to show up. And he's going to show out. I got the power. God bless you. I hope you enjoyed today's broadcast. I'm praying that the word was such a blessing to you and that you begin to apply the word to your life so it can change and rearrange things in your life for the good. If you have never received Jesus as your personal savior, um, this is the perfect time to do that. You know, we are saved by grace through faith. It's unearned, undeserved favor. Just believing on Jesus. So if you'd like to receive him, oh, what a wonderful day to receive the Lord. Romans 10 and 9 says, you'll confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. So just repeat after me, lift your hands and say, Lord Jesus, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. I believe that you died for me to set me free. Forgive me, come on, repeat it, all of my sins, cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I've done wrong right now. I change lordships. I make Jesus Lord and Savior of my life. Therefore, I am saved. God bless you. Welcome to the family of God. If you made that confession, um, please email us, write us, let us know so we can send you some free literature to help you in your Christian walk. We love you. And most of all, Jesus loves you. See you soon.